Hello there, and welcome back. Yeah, we are now at part two of this week's New Comics, bitches! I crushed your head. So, um, uh, I gotta have some fun uh, with you. So, okay. Um, FF number 12. Uh, so basically, this is the kids' issue. <laughs> this is where all of the Future Foundation kids uh, find themselves in uh, Latveria, and they they kind of bring the fun with them. Um, although Reed is, you know, I'm sorry, Imposter Reed, Otherworld Reed, uh, is, you know, he is uh, he's posturing with, uh, you know, with uh, with Doctor Doom and Kristoff and Nathaniel, and just basically, you know. Um, you know, basically, you know, going, you know, on and on about, you know, how powerful he is and how everybody else is kind of an insect compared to him. You know, Doom, but Doom keeps up the class, you know, he just, or I shouldn't say the class, but it really, you know, just kind of, you know, to, to maintain appearances, even though he's kind of uh, leashed right now, for lack of a better term, uh, kind of both figurative, figuratively and literally. Um, you know, we have a lot of stuff with Nathaniel and with uh, Valeria. Um, and this is, you know, some really interesting stuff. I mean, I like Valeria, and she's kind of, you know, um, you know, she's almost, if, you know, if, like, Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes were really super smart, this would be, you know, I, I kind of see her as, as being that, because... You know, she has this innocence, but she has this ability. I mean, it's like she creates a freaking lightsaber <laughs> in this issue, which is just, it's, it's just cool, man. I mean, that's some cool stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, again, it's, you know, like I said, the kids bring a lot of fun to it. Um, the artist uh, Juan Bobillo, or Bobillo, it's spelled two different ways. It's, t it's spelled with a double B on the cover, and on the interior, it's spelled with only one L. Um, I'm so did I say double Bs? I meant double Ls. So two Ls on the outside, which would be Bobillo, um, one on the inside, which would be Bobillo. Uh, so I don't know. I'll say Bobillo. Um, his art's kind of... Uh, it's a little... It, everybody kind of looks uh, squished. <laughs> that's uh, that. That's one of the things that does kind of bother me. Um, the, everybody's face looks like, you know, like they've been crunched together. Um, uh, so it, it's a little bit off. One of the things that does kind of bother me about this comic is kind of the consistently rotating artists. It's like, okay, we've got Steve Epting, who I love, Barry Kitson, who I also, you know, kind of love. It's like it's like really like as opposed to love. Um, and now we've got this guy, and it's like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Come on, I want to see, you know, somebody consistent, I guess. You know, just give me someone who, uh, you know, will stay on the title and will be on it for a while. Because it seems like all of these comics nowadays, like, they just seem to have the kind of this rotating batch of artists as opposed to someone consistent. Um, that is a little bothersome sometimes, but, uh, you know, as long as you just get the same quality of artists, then it's not a problem. I didn't, I certainly didn't mind going from Steve Epting to Barry Kitson. That was, that was really good with me. Uh, but going to this guy, it just, it didn't look good. So, um, so I do have to take a point off from that. Um, and again, you know, the, the specific character beats are a little muddled, um, so, you know, I guess, you know, and as a follow-up to uh, FF number, you know, or I'm sorry, Fantastic Four number 600, uh, this is really kind of a letdown because it feels like, okay, that's something really huge happened there. Um, this could have been an issue that maybe would have been the next issue or something like that. I don't know. But, you know, when you have something as important as Johnny Storm coming back, that's not something you just kind of, eh, well, the next issue, you know, maybe just the next issue of Fantastic Four will deal with that. No, I mean, if you're going to have, you know, these books coming out sequentially, which they do, then, 
that's something you just got to bring up, man. That's an elephant in the room. You can't ignore it, but they do. So, so this is about, this is about a three out of five leaning more towards two and a half. It's, you know, it's, it's a little bit better than average because most of Hickman's stuff, even when it's not so great, is still pretty damn good. Um, but again, this just, I think this had a lot of missed opportunities. So, okay. Uh, Angel and Faith, number five. Uh, so, um, I'm sorry, number four. Uh, uh, for some reason I thought it was number five. Um, but, you know, we have, uh, you know, these two, uh, <laughs> you know, we have these two vampires that, uh, uh, that Angel either partied with or uh, sired or whatever. They're really, really quite powerful. And we've got the Mora blood that Angel's been wanting for a while, and he wants to, uh, you know, he wants to use it to, rec to, to resurrect Giles because uh, he knows that that could possibly help him to do that. This is basically what the whole book has become about. But we see what the Mora blood has done to humans and this is kind of how uh you know this is kind of when uh angel makes the decision and well more, more faith makes the decision to destroy the last amount of more blood that they have because they have a vial of it but they just basically wipe it out because these you know these poor beings they are you know they're in quite a bit of pain um and, you know, Whistler uh, is involved in this. Whistler, to me, it's... I don't know if he appeared in earlier issues of this comic. Um, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, Whistler... Uh, you know, if you go back to, you know, the second uh, season of Buffy, uh, you'll see where Whistler first appeared and basically, you know, introduced uh angel to the idea of working for the powers that be uh and you know kind of doing the right thing kind of watching over buffy so on and so forth and um you know there's there's a lot of this is a very character heavy comic book and not just in uh that it's about the characters but there's a lot of characters in it um so uh there's, you know, there's a Slayer who wants to, you know, uh, you know, there's a Slayer that wants to kill Pearl and Nash. Uh, there's a Slayer, but the same Slayer also wants to kill Angel. I'm assuming probably because of what happened while he was Twilight. Um, so, uh, the thing that is really interesting about this book as a whole, and the thing that's really cool about it is that it's told from Faith's point of view as opposed to Angel. Even though Angel's, you know, he's got top billing, this is definitely more Faith's comic because Faith gets to do the more interesting stuff. Um, we have to follow her because she is more of an ordinary person uh, as opposed to Angel who is, you know, constantly kind of in, you know, in brood mode and, you know, he has, you know, centuries of experience to draw on. And we're just, you know, we're looking at this one young, you know, this one young woman's life and basically what she's had to come to terms with. So, I mean, again, you know, the, uh, the idea of redemption is very heavy uh, within this book because you have these two very, uh, you know, damaged characters. Um, and they're both in need of a little redemption. Although Faith has redeemed herself a couple times over, I think. And, but Angel definitely has the long way to go, which is, you know, brings us to Giles and, uh, the kind of, uh, the thing that, uh, the, the, the ending of this comic isn't really a reveal, but it does leave you with a question on your lips that, and that in and of itself is really cool. It's like, okay, what just happened? What did we just see? Um, and that's, you know, that's really, really interesting. Um. So, uh, and, you know, Rebecca Isaac's art, really good, um, you know, four out of five, easy. I'm really, really enjoying Christos Gage working in the Buffyverse, or, you know, in the Whedonverse, I guess, because, although, you know, Angel, you know, and Faith do stem out of the Buffyverse. So, anyway, moving along. Um, 
we're, we're at our book of the week. <laughs> How about that? Um, so, and that is Daredevil, issue six. Uh, first of all, Marco Smartin, my favorite comic book artist of 2011, continues to do absolutely stunning work. Uh, it's, you know, I won't get too heavy into the plot of this particular issue, but needless to say, but, you know, just to, to say, you know, it's, it's interesting having this character of Bruiser, uh, and that he's basically, he's kind of like a, a NASCAR of, uh, of like super villain hitmen kind of guy, because he's got all of these like brand names on his, uh, on his, you know, on his costume. He's got AIM, Hydra, you know, Super Society, Magia, uh, you know, and they, and basically you've got, you know, you know, all of these, you know, the, you know, the Agents Byzantine, uh, Black Spectre, Secret Empire, um, you know, all these super terrorist groups. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, that's something that I do, you know, that I do like. And also, it's fun watching, seeing Daredevil be a superhero again. Because, you know, being the protector of Hell's Kitchen and everything like that, I mean, obviously that makes for riveting storytelling. But at times, it's just it, the bleakness of it, which fits, of course, with the characters and the writers and the surroundings. But it's nice to see Daredevil get the hell out of Hell's Kitchen for a little while, take a little walk around, and see that, hey, there's other shit going on here. And, you know, and other people need my help other than just Hell's Kitchen. And so let's, let me be, you know, the Scarlet Swashbuckler again. You know, that's kind of what you know, what Mark Wade is doing with this comic. That's the whole point of it, as far as I'm concerned, is to say, you know what? We've had years of really shitting on Matt Murdock and just making his life a living hell. He's not having any fun. Nothing's in, nothing's enjoyable to him. Nothing's interesting to him, except for, you know, the, the fight. The fight is the only thing that's important to him. Uh, so, I mean, this... Seeing and like I said, it's riveting reading. You know, Bendis, Brubaker, they did some great stuff on this title. Great stuff. But it's just really nice to see uh, you know him as a hero again. And then we've got you know uh, you know and is it you know we've got this really cool MacGuffin in this book, which is you know it's it, it's such a neat. Uh, concept that all of this stuff, all of this knowledge is stored upon the patch of a, a Fantastic Four uniform because of the properties of, you know, the unstable molecules. Uh, and, you know, the way that DD takes down Bruiser and everything like that, and, you know, just kind of figuring out how Bruiser's constructed. I mean, this is easily the most fun Dead of a book in probably decades, because uh, I don't remember any time <laughs> reading it uh, since, like, the 80s that it's been fun to read. Because he's always been kind of Marvel's whipping boy. I mean, you know, th that role belonged to Spider-Man for a long time. Now he's kind of getting some respect. You know, he's been getting some respect lately. And But Daredevil, I mean, he's just gets, you can, I mean, he's just getting pounded into the fucking ground. Um, but, you know, it's nice to see him, you know, feeling like he's a little bit back on top of the world. So that was Book of the Week. Five out of five across the board. Great comic. Uh, another five out of five that I read this week but didn't come out this week uh, is um, I'm really I, Joshua Hale Fialkoff, uh has been doing um, you know Top Cow's pilot season stuff. He did a comic book called The Test. I bought it through Comicsology. I read it uh, on my tablet. Um, it's fantastic. I think that voting actually opens today. They said the fifth, so it is now the fifth. Uh, and so, get your get yourself over to Top Cow and vote on that if the voting is indeed open, and if this is a title, if the title of the test is available for being voted on, because that is really, really good stuff. I mean. Joshua Hale Fialkoff, he's great. So, again, like, dislike, subscribe, friend, follow me, Twitter, at Donnelly92274. I'm on Facebook, James Donnelly. 
This is the Shadow Gallery. We'll see you next time.